So Meghan Markle. There's been a couple of trailers that have been released and some of the non-verbal communication, even though they're just short trailers, gives us a real good insight into what we could possibly expect when the show actually airs on CBS. What is Meghan holding back? What is she going to say? Is that cool, calm, controlled exterior about to erupt? So this is what we're going to look at in this video here. I'm going to be giving you an insight, highlighting, allowing you to focus on some of the non-verbal behaviour that Megan is offering within the trailers that are out there and freely available for anybody to view. We'll be looking at her behaviour. We'll be looking at the relationship that exists or doesn't exist that is false or true with Oprah. And we'll be looking at certain occasions where Megan does something or says something and her body language doesn't mirror up. It doesn't match up. We haven't got that synchrony. Now what I would like to see as the first thing to note is the mirroring body language between Megan and Oprah. When the first trailer comes in, you'll see that the position within the chairs. You'll see that they've got their legs crossed, so they're actually facing each other. Megan's right leg, Oprah's left, so they're actually coming in towards each other. Their upper, their torso area as well is also mirroring. Now mirroring, you might understand this, is where you feel comfortable with somebody. You know, you move, they move, they move, you move. They cross their arms, you cross their arms, they open their arms, you open their arms. It's that comfortable. Now this indicates a rapport, a genuine rapport between Megan towards Oprah and it's reciprocated as well. Now one of the things to be mindful of here and it's just to be mindful is that when you have got that rapport, how fair is this interview going to be? How truthful is it going to be? Remember, we're always trying to be fair and balanced here on the Believe in Bruce channel. But when you've got a genuine rapport with someone, what you don't have is that amygdala fire in the brain, that fight or flight, that response system. It's a bit like, you know, your friend asks you a question. Your amygdala will still fire, but you can lie a little bit better. You can give, you know, some maybes untruths that take less effort because you are more comfortable in that situation. My point is, yeah, what would be better for a more truthful, authentic type chat? Because Megan gets some positive press, she gets a lot of negative press as well. It would be more balanced if the person interviewing her was neutral. That is not the case here. Yes, the, you know, Oprah was invited to the wedding, we don't know what friendship they've got. But just by that mirror and that rapport, there's a genuine comfort there, which is great from one aspect, but can be detrimental to sometimes maybe, you know, exposing some truths or something that can help Megan maybe to react in a certain way that her, her walls come crumbling down and we're not after to prove that she's guilty. What we're trying to do is provide a nice emotional fair baseline that we can get more of the truth. And what you also see within Meghan and Oprah is that although they are mirroring, uh, when Oprah asks a question about how do you think the royal family will feel when you're going to speak your truth, what you see is that they both adopt the thinker's position. Yeah, so the lower half stays the same, but the thinker's position is when an arm comes up, you'll have done this before, possibly done it, or you'll have seen it in other people, when the arm comes up and the finger comes here. Now this is a self-soothe. There's no need for that arm to come up. Both of them do that. All right, that's interesting. Both of them do that. Now that could be Oprah who's pondering the answer. All right, but it also could be Megan who's thinking about the answer. The, the, the obviously point I'm, I'm giving here is that both of them do this. Now, it's the other arm that I would like you to focus on here. Because what we've got is when that arm comes up, not only is it a self-soothe, it also forms a barrier. It forms a barrier between you and the other person. Ventral protection. This is where our major organs are here. So not only does that arm come across to adopt that self-soothe, it forms some type of protection. Now, when we're talking about the other arm, I would like you to notice what Oprah's left arm is doing. Oprah's left arm is back like this, okay? That would indicate that she is indeed not hiding anything, not keeping anything back. She is totally comfortable in that situation. Because we've got the behavioral cluster of the thinking and then this arm exposed here, she is shown her ventral area. She has no threat there. We can conclude that she is indeed thinking. When it comes to Megan, now again, we've got to be fair and balanced. What we've got here is Megan's right hand is across her tummy area. Now, 
This could be because she is expecting. That is a, nat a natural defense and protect mechanism. All right, she's expecting a baby. It could be that she's more comfortable in there. But also it could be that there's that barrier. We just don't know. We have to be open and mindful that on this situation, although there's a lot of mirroring, when it comes to ventral protection, you know, when somebody comes to you and you don't like them, you'll tend to cross your arms. We want to protect that area if we feel some type of threat. Megan is doing that and it could be for any, any, let's be fair and balanced, of the reasons that I've just said. And also when she's talking about the royal family, she calls it the firm. Role that the firm is playing. Role that the firm is playing. All right, the firm is playing games, you know, constantly helping spread those rumors about us, those falsehoods. Now, her choice of using the words the firm, all right, is not by chance. The cadence, the inflection, words are so powerful, so powerful. She could have called them the royal family, but she didn't, the firm. She wants to have an impact on us where our feelings come to that we start to imagine the royal family as the bullies. And I'm not saying they're not, by the way, I'm not saying they are. What I'm saying is the mechanism that Megan has used here is by using the words the firm and playing games, etc. It's like these are the bullies in the schoolyard. This is the feeling that she wants to create. Now again, authentically, fair and balanced. This is the phraseology that she might use to actually talk about the royal family. But what I'm saying is to be fair and balanced, we need to be mindful how those words can impact our judgment when we're trying to control all those biases, all those heuristic biases that may be driving us one way or the other. Interestingly, when also Megan talks about the impact that it's had, you'll see that she looks down. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So this is where she's recollecting a memory from the hippocampus part of the brain. Yeah, she's recollecting that memory from down there. But then when she says about stuff that's still impacting us or the lose more, you'll see her eyes sweep to the right hand side. And if that comes with risk, of, and if that comes with risk, of, and if that comes with now down here to the left, she's thinking about things that have happened. As she sweeps, she is searching, all right? She is searching for something that either A, hasn't come to her memory as quickly as the other images, or B, has not happened yet, so it could potentially happen in the future. Now, what we're noticing here is that that could be the direct consequence, the direct consequence of her thinking into the future about what will happen after this interview. What will be the impact? There's a reason why her and Harry have decided to do the interview. Will it achieve their aim? Will it achieve their ambitions? We don't know, but we know from that search that Megan is indeed looking for an answer. Now what's quite telling is she offers an open hand gesture here, an open palm, when she's explaining about the threat that the royal family potentially perceive her, or at least she believes the royal family thinks about her. Now an open palm is a powerful gesture. It shows I hold no threat. So that would indicate that actually she's being genuine here. Or, as a minimum, she genuinely believes that she is no threat to the royal family. Think about it. If someone's ever come into a room and asked you, did you do it? You know, have you done this? If you have done it, your reactions might be different, even though you're trying to lie, all right? But if you haven't done it, the first reaction that we'll have is our shoulders will go up. This is called the tortoise effect. We're trying to protect our neck area. Our shoulders go up, yeah, our arms come out to the side. No, it wasn't me. All right, wasn't me. We'll have done this a thousand times. So the fact that Megan is offering that open palm gesture means that as a minimum, she does not see herself, or at least she's confused, she's confused as to why the royal family see her a threat. Or oh, that's the image she's trying to portray. Also, there's a number of eye blocks, about two eye blocks that happen in quick succession. Boom, boom. An eye block is when you're mentally, so you're retrieving an image from the hippocampus, a memory and an emotional memory, and you're trying to block it out, you don't like it. So something has occurred that Megan is trying to block out, or, okay, this is the interesting bit, there might be something that makes her feel uncomfortable, how she's been treated, right? How she's, you know, how she thinks the royal family has behaved towards her, the press has behaved towards her, whatever it may be. She feels uncomfortable, there's an eye block, or there's an untruth. So when she's delivering that answer, it's all the one or the other, it has to be. It's either something that makes her feel uncomfortable 
or as she's saying it, she doesn't believe what she's saying and she gets a couple of eye blocks. Now this is the one. This is the one that I'm really interested in. So far, Megan has been calm, controlled. She comes across as if she's having a conversation which her authentic feelings, remember these are just trailers, all right? So we get them might have been pieced together, edited together. So one bit might have been from here and the next bit is from half an hour's time. But she is calm. She is composed. Those words just come and she's very selective of the words that she uses. She's very clever in the words that she uses as well. But the one bit that does indicate the boiling point, the temperature, the eruption that may indeed occur is when she starts speaking about what they've already lost. Now here we're looking at an emotional baseline. What's she doing all the time? Average. What does she do more of? And I think less of, we're going to focus on that. So here, when she's answering the question, you'll see there's multiple reactions from her head as if she's having an argument with herself. She's if had like, and again, this is instant. This is the beauty with body language, the limbic system, the honest part of the brain. Our body reacts instantly, autonomously to what's going on. And when she's talking about how they've lost things already or lost too much, there's a, there's a conundrum, there's a tornado going on inside her head, which she, she doesn't know whether to nod or shake. There is an elongated block, not just a blink, there is an elongated block, an eye block about something so powerful she is trying to block out. Again, it could be something so powerful, it could be a non-truth when it's not too sure. And then there's also a bit of a glob of sensation. That stops her, that tightening of the throat, that stops her getting her words out. If just for a second, it definitely presents itself. I mean, I've, there's a lot that's been lost already. What is going on inside her head? What does she really want to say? What is she keeping back? What we do know is in that particular question and answer phase, and that phase alone, when she is asked that question and she is trying to respond, that adrenaline dump happens. That's why you see that erratic behavior. That's why we get the globus sensation there, the emotional reaction. It's been totally different to all of her nonverbal behaviors up until this point now. And this is the intriguing part. What will we see in the full interview? What signals has Megan given off that she might not even be aware of that here on the Believe in Bruce channel in a fair and balanced way, it always must be fair and always must be balanced. We'll be ready to dissect, to divulge, to learn from, to share learning when the full episode comes out. So if you've enjoyed this little deep dive into the non-verbal behavioral clues that Megan has given off during the trailers, remember to subscribe to the channel. Please give me a like, share as well. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, please share to support the channel. And also please comment below. Not only does a like and a comment below support the algorithm to help this video get more views, I'm interested. What are you seeing going on? What are your opinions? What biases are you bringing? How do you think the interview will play out? What do you think we'll be looking for? See so yeah, everyone, subscribe and like, but more important than any of this, believe in Bruce. Please remember to be kind to yourselves and each other.